Hello and welcome to a brand new on Source World Christmas Carolathon. Last year we went through 12 different Christmas Carol adaptations and I thought, well, let's load up 12 more. So this year we're back, we have some traditional, some modern, and some just plain bizarre ones. But let's kick off the season with a traditional one. This one titled Simply Scrooge, much like the alternate title of the Sims version we covered last year, released in 1935 of all years and starring Seymour Hicks as the titular character. A few things make this stand out from the Sims version, however, that being that it is a slightly older release and whose main available copies are a somewhat weathered transfer from the original black and white film strip, but also that it has been plentifully recolorized. In fact, the colorization is the copy you're probably most likely to find on streaming, and it's not bad, but it does add a level of murkiness to the film that I don't think was intentional, like trying to paint around the shading of a black and white piece of art. It gets a bit hazy. If you do try to watch this, then I recommend the also available, for now, official free copy of the black and white edition on YouTube. Link in the description. As not only does it look much more crisp than the colorized copies or the bootleg copies of the black and white cut you'll find for free there, but it's also slightly longer and includes more scenes from the book that were cut for whatever random reason. Anyway, back to that grunge. All of that does really add to the quality that I called out as part of Sims' film's charm. You know, that I kind of really sort of murkiness, the griminess. I really like when these films, especially the older ones, feel of the time, despite not being made until over half a century since the original book. The added coarseness, I think, accentuates Scrooge's own, and is a great way to get across all of that atmospherically. Although I do think that does go a bit too far at points, especially with Scrooge himself, because while I think overall Seymour Hicks does a fantastic job, as he is just a veritable curmudgeon in the performance that belongs in the dictionary. Eventually, I think that the presentation loses its way. Scrooge looks like a complete slob, which might be a nitpick to some, but it doesn't really get him across as a very serious businessman. He looks like a bum. I get what they were going for, though, as it does accentuate his austere and skinflint nature that he doesn't take any you know, presentation into account of his own appearance, uh, that he's so bit, you know, that he's so focused on money that that becomes secondary concern. Makes sense, but it's not a choice I personally prefer. That said, the rest of the production is visually first class. In ways that are kind of shocking for how old and how well not very recommended this one is, I've never heard about it in terms of best carols, but it does belong up there for some of the creative swings it takes. Such as, I absolutely love the way it portrays the ghosts. Marley, when he first shows up, did give me some pause because, well, he doesn't show up. He's just space. Empty, invisible space. The camera follows around the room. It's following nothing. It's really funny. And it does make lines like, these chains I forged in life funny because what change? You don't see anything. You hear the chains rattling, but it does lack that impact of actually seeing him as a ghost weighed down by, you know, this torture he's imposed on himself by his greedy and selfish nature. Uh, so at first I thought it was going to be a bit rough, but then the other ghosts happened and like if there's one thing each carol adaptation tries to make themselves stand apart with, it's how they design the ghosts. And this is no different and I applaud it. Christmas Past is just light itself and like if um, just the brightness that guides Scrooge and illuminates his forgotten memories. And it only gets the barest hint of shape near the end when they appear in a vaguely humanoid outline. It's really enigmatic. Christmas present, well, he's Christmas present. The colorized version makes his robe red, which is, you know, a new one. Um, which is, again, why I prefer the black and white one, because, you know, you can imagine it to be the classic green. But moving along, Christmas future is fantastic, and I don't know why this kind of method has been done more often, where he is just shadow. A shadow on the wall, or as Christmas Present puts it in many adaptations, the shadows of things to come. And I think that it's such a fun way to present all of that, and the movie goes out of its way to frame and block shots to really milk that creeping shadow visual idea for all it's worth. It's a really good instinct to do it this way, and I applaud it. Oh, and I guess there is this pretty odd scene otherwise where there is a Christmas banquet that sings to the health of the Queen which I, more than anything, just reminds you of how British this story is. Overall though, this is a very fine adaptation. Visually, and I mean that without the color, and in terms of performance and being magnanimous, it stands right along some of the best ones, 
including the Sim Scrooge for sure. Uh, they complement each other so well, and I couldn't choose between them. Uh, and I think it's definitely worth watching. If you want to sink into an old and weathered feeling Christmas Carol on a chilly December evening, this will do the trick. Watch the black and white copy on YouTube, the official one, not the bootleg ones, while you still have the chance. It's going to be well worth it. Overall, I gotta give this like 9 out of 10. The only other issues I would have with it are that it is very truncated. It is possibly the shortest Christmas Carol movie I have seen so far at barely over an hour. And even then, it does, you know, manage to jam a lot into it without feeling forced or unnatural. Uh, which, you know, will come to play um, later on in this, you know, Christmas carol -thon. But thank you so much for listening. Let me know if you plan on seeing this one, if you've seen this one already. And uh, yeah, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Have a great first day of Christmas.